The story I'm about to tell you is one of the most extraordinary tales of our time. It's a story of change, a change which has affected all of us. Some say it's a change for the worse. Others find it a change that is very exciting. To you to judge for yourself whether you think the new sound of music gives you as much lift and as much pleasure as the tones which came out of this late Victorian barrel organ. But one thing is certain. When this machine, with its wooden roll and its metal pegs which tweak little levers to open and close the stops on the organ pipes and produce the right notes, first appeared on the streets, this was, to the many people who heard it, their first experience of recorded music. And once the engineers realized that they could capture the sound of music mechanically, it was inevitable that music was going to change. Instead of a hedgehog robot stabbing out the notes, with a new control system, much grander performances became possible. By triggering several instruments at once using perforated paper rolls, the fairground was suddenly offering robot music as a new attraction. It wasn't long before the new technology found its way into the home, which meant that, perhaps for the first time, the keen musician was no longer limited by his lack of talent. This time, the paper roll triggers the notes using a system of suction. But because the pianola depends for its quality and its tempo on how skillfully I pump with my feet and manipulate the controls with my hand, there's no way that I can be certain of getting exactly the same performance of the piece of music out of the instrument every time I play it. And indeed, the pianola was never intended to be that sort of instrument. But using largely this technology, it soon became possible on a more sophisticated piano to produce identical virtuoso performances every time a piece of music was played. The novelty was electricity, taking all the painful legwork out of pianola recitals and enabling inventors to create a host of quite extraordinary music makers. The strings are fingered by tiny pads pushed up by a battery of electromagnets. Another electromagnet generates the tremolo and an electric motor powers the wheels which bow the strings. And it was electrical contacts made through the perforated paper roll which drove the machine.
Herculano might still be popular today, but for the development of a machine which produced not an automatic performance, but a recording of an actual one. <laughs> the voice of Sir Harry Lauder, replayed on a phonograph. No paper roll or musical box could make a sound like this. The phonograph, and later the gramophone, could capture complete performances. But it was to take another breakthrough in recording equipment before those performances could be changed. This monster of the 1930s was one of the first magnetic recording machines. Today, it's the musician who gets isolated on the other side of the glass-fronted booth. But back in the early 30s, it was the forerunner of the magnetic tape recorder, which had to be safely stowed away. And when you see the material on which it made its recording, you'll understand why the engineer always handled it with leather gloves. Two giant reels like this whirled through the tape recorder at a frightening 60 inches a second. This stuff. A razor-sharp band of steel. And when this band broke, as it had a habit of doing, everybody had to be well clear of the sharp edge as it scythed viciously through the air. But the necessity of forever joining the steel band together became, in the hands of the creative musician, a virtue. When just before the Second World War, German engineers demonstrated that what you can do with steel, you can also do much more conveniently with plastic tape coated with a close relation to rust. With the new tape, and nothing more than a razor blade, new areas of musical creativity became possible. The arrival of tape recorders meant even the most basic sounds could be transformed. Experimenting with music was no longer the monopoly of the imaginative musician. Even the earliest of tape recorders could manage quite happily the faithful reproduction of three notes twanged on the piano. It was the possibilities for unfaithful reproduction which also caused excitement. On this length of tape are those same three notes. <laughs> If I wind this piece of tape through the machine by hand, at a speed which isn't constant and in a direction which is forever changing, those three twangs become a collection of quite different sounds. In fact, if we re-recorded this performance on another machine, I might end up with a sonata for three notes and tape recorder. And I wouldn't be the first. But let's take this creativity a stage further. Let's find the start of the last note. There it is. I'll cut the tape there. Now I can take the end note, turn it the other way round, Put it back, ready to join up. So, what have we got now? Our first two notes are still the right way round, producing a boing sound with a quick start and a slow finish, or what musicians call sharp attack, gentle decay. But now we've turned the last note the wrong way round. We've got the decay first. Now it's become a sound. And if I finish the joins here, it should sound something like this. Crude stuff, you're probably thinking. But to some people, the possibilities of doctoring natural sound using the new magnetic tape became an obsession. In 1958, a reluctant BBC was forced to allow a tiny group of enthusiasts to get some gear out of redundant stores 
and establish itself here in two rooms in London's Maida Vale. We live in an age of technology in which machines touch every part of our lives. It is not surprising that music has also been influenced by technology. We are listening to music in which every sound was created electronically. The piece of electronic jazz we are now hearing, which I wrote about a year ago, represents one kind of electronic music. But the range of possibilities is enormous, extending from popular rock and roll settings to the most abstract kind of concert hall music. One of the things that I enjoy most about electronic music is its immediacy. The composer normally waits quite a long time between the time he puts notes on paper and hears his piece performed in a concert hall. But a composer working with electronic music is more like a painter or a sculptor who works directly with his medium. You hear the sounds as they are created. Another challenging part of electronic music is working with sophisticated electronic equipment such as computers or electronic sound synthesizers. I turned to electronic music mainly because I found I couldn't get the kinds of sounds I wanted with live players and ordinary instruments. I wanted very fast running passages and complicated rhythms which players can't perform. I wanted pitches which lie in between the pitches of the regular instruments, and I wanted particularly sound qualities which no instrument or combination of instruments can readily produce. consequences of the new types of sound is that the old notation using notes on staffs simply doesn't work anymore. We find that we have to introduce an entirely new sort of notation which often takes the form of graphs. I enrolled in college both as a music major and electronics major. Um, shortly after enrolling, I uh, left college to join a jazz recording artist to program electronic music. This led me into composing for um, motion pictures using computer technology. This technology is revolutionizing music. On machines like this, any conceivable sound can be taken as raw material and can be combined and built up to create soundtracks ranging from sound effects to space music. To find out how electronic music is created, let's first learn how sounds are produced on conventional musical instruments. When a string on a string bass is made to vibrate or oscillate, a sound is produced. By changing the length of the oscillating strings with the left hand, the instrument produces different pitches. Oscillations are also occurring in the air column inside the flute. When fingers are raised and lowered, the rate of oscillation is changed, and so is the pitch. The flute sound can be picked up by a microphone and changed into an electric current that also oscillates. This electronic oscillation can then be shown it forms a wave pattern.
We are looking at a machine called an electronic sound synthesizer. The synthesizer can create and alter sounds. Built into the synthesizer are a number of oscillators. These oscillators produce sound electronically. Each oscillator produces a different kind of sound with a different wave form. This is a sine wave. Another oscillator produces a triangular wave. A square or pulse wave. And a sawtooth wave. The pitch or rate of oscillation of each waveform can be controlled. Pitch can also be controlled on the synthesizer by using a fingerboard. Or a keyboard. By mixing waveforms, richness and variety of sound can be achieved. Each musical instrument makes a distinctive sound. This is because of the waveform the instrument produces and by the way it envelopes sound. Enveloping has to do with how abruptly each note begins and ends. On the sound synthesizer, it is possible to create and alter envelopes. Here is a note with an abrupt beginning and end. To create an envelope for the sound, a beginning or a tack is added. Next, an ending or decay is attached. As well as enveloping, the synthesizer can also filter sound. Let's listen to how this jet noise can be altered when parts of it are filtered or removed. One filter removes the high parts of the sound, allowing only the low end to pass. With another filter, the low sounds are removed. By using both filters at once, it is possible to allow only a narrow band of sound to pass. This band can be moved down or up. By connecting the keyboard to the filters, 
a melody can be played by filtering the jet noise. Musical instruments can be imitated on the synthesizer by creating and mixing waveforms and filtering and enveloping these sounds. Since the string bass makes low sounds, the filter is used which removes high pitches. Then, different waveforms are tried out. Next, an envelope is added, a sharp attack. And a slower decay. Now let's listen as the sound synthesizer imitates the koto, a Japanese instrument. With the modern digital sound synthesizer, the actual sounds of musical instruments can be pre-recorded and stored in the computer for later use. Here is a pre-recorded trumpet sound. The sound can be displayed visually on the machine in various ways. The pitch of the trumpet sound can be controlled on the keyboard. The sound of the violin or any other instrument can be manipulated the same way. Any sound can be recorded and manipulated by the digital synthesizer. One, two, three. 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 Let's listen to the synthesizer as it is played and then as it changes the sounds of musical instruments. Sounds made by musical instruments can be picked up by microphones and fed into the synthesizer. The operator of the synthesizer can then alter or process the sounds of these instruments by using filters and changing envelopes and waveforms. We are listening now to the processed or altered sound.
Often it is difficult for a person to control a complicated sound synthesizer quickly enough. A computer can take over much of this control work and do it more quickly and accurately than a human being. The composer is telling the computer what kind of sounds he wants. Using computer language, he is describing a melody he wants to use in a composition. This melody by Bach is one we've already heard. The computer can help manipulate this melody in many ways. By using a switch, the composer can instruct the computer to play the melody backwards. Or upside down. He can change the pitches. He can play loudly or softly. Or fast and slow. The computer built into the modern digital sound synthesizer makes it possible for the musician to compose pieces quickly. By using a light pen, the composer is telling the computer what pre-recorded sounds he wants to use. He can easily add or subtract instruments, pitches, and rhythms. of synthesizers and computers, it is possible to imitate, change, and create sound. A whole new world of creative possibilities has been opened to the musician by electronic music. Thank <laughs> you.